This is the first question. Two guys, name two guys that that made money at the combine. That, <clears throat> and that, and I don't mean like the top guys because we know Caleb's probably going number one. I mean two guys that because of their performance, they went up in their draft status. And I let you guys go first. I was, I got two guys in mind, but I'll save mine for last. That way, if I have to pivot, I'll pivot because I'm pretty sure I watch more because. Because Hendo watched the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of seconds, and seconds. I watched hours upon hours upon hours. So I, I'll save mine for last because I can pivot. <laughs> we all, we all, we all gonna, we all agree that one guy that ran the four to uh, uh, worthy Xavier Worthy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was gonna ask you guys before the show started. Where was he projected to be drafted? You know, before that forty, because now it's first round pick. Thirdish. Okay. Now, now he's now he's going to be in the first round. I, I had him. It. I had him secondish. I doubt it. Yeah. yeah. I doubt it. You doubt what, coach? He in the first. You saw yeah, what happened, John Ross. I did that in the first. I think he's definitely first round. That's how. That's how uh, Matt Jones got into the first round. Yeah, remember Matt Jones? First, I just that's that, that, just me though. I just doubt that. That goes back to what you're saying because, like, all those guys that we grew up with, right? Like, because Al Davis ain't here no more. And right, Al Davis was here. Now, if I was here, he'd be, he'd be going number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> so, I'm surprised uh, he's not, I'm Jose, surprised that's not your, doing that's your the guy. dance right now. I think ready him. To make that <laughs> yeah, and uh, and Chop Robinson from Penn. I mean, State. he was al- he was already a first round pick. I think I think he was like a, he was projected to be a first round pick, but um, he ran like a four four forty, a four 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 two or something like that. Um, people love their forties, man. I told you, forty times changed the hearts and minds of you know of of, of like the, the the most staunch uh evaluators, man. Like I mm-hmm. I think you run the you you already are thought highly of, or you put on some good tape. And then you run a forty time that kind of blows people' expectations out the water. That's gonna that's gonna raise your stock. Uh, I would say one for me was uh, Lad McConkey. I know he was projected to go, you know, uh, in that that second round, late first, possibly you know, maybe early to mid second round. But I, he ran faster than I thought he would run, and he he just looks he looks smooth. Uh, you know, out there in the catching drills and, and running his routes yeah. and everything. But I think he, he really kind of solidified himself. I think if he's there at 33, that could be the pick for Carolina. Uh, but also, this other guy, Tanner, <laughs> Tanner <laughs> Bordellini, uh, <laughs> the center out of Wisconsin. And this is this is based solely on uh, – I had mentioned this, I believe, with the, on the show with Hendo before. Uh, I don't know if you follow Josh Norris. He, he covers the draft a lot. Uh, but he has a, a list of offensive linemen who who have run a sub four four seven uh, the the shuttle, and mm-hmm. basically all those guys who are sub four four seven have been starters in the league. You know, and, and not that they're all great, but they all have been you know starters for for various amounts of time. Uh, he ran a four two eight, so mm. I think that's that's somebody. And Carolina has been talking about. Uh, possibly moving on from Bradley Bozeman, kind of reconfiguring their interior line. Uh, I'm not sure where he's projected to go, uh, but I think that's somebody maybe they could be looking at there. Panther legend, Pit, Panther legend Bradley Bozeman. That's right. <laughs> that's that guy. That's right. Certainly that guy. Man, I was going to say Lad McComb. Um, oh, that's too bad. Who was uh? Who was? <laughs> who was uh, Who was Ozzie Newsom's last draft pick ever? Zayler, 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 Zach Zayler. Yes, he was, and it's a clone. Raiden Fisk, FSU. Mm. I think um, mm, that's a good one. Hendo. I think him being three hundred pounds, running at four, four seven eight forty, and at four three eight uh, twenty yard shuttle. Plus, he uh, he did some things where he was practicing with one team, and then he had to switch sides. And he's just like, "Hey, I'm gonna do what I need to do." Plus, he showed up at the end of the season for Florida State. I think he's one guy that is actually raising his stock. And with with Zach Siler looking the way that he looked, being a seven round pick, I think he made himself some money. But also, somehow, you start off high and you just keep going higher. One guy that's now projected to be top five, top three, JJ McCarthy. You think you think it's, it's up? What? 
Oh, James yeah, he, he was. Is he was up. gonna be? He was gonna be the, my answer to the next question. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, oh. but no, I, I hear what he was saying because he he didn't do well. But after not. the combine, everybody was pumping him up. Oh, I saw one guy responded to to tons of people. Were like, yo, he he didn't throw the ball well at all, and they're like, oh, he showed his arm strength. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid to come to the combine and compete. And he and he and he That's did great in the interviews. I'm telling you, right. they projected yeah. last one I saw. He was projected going three to the Patriots. Three yeah. overall. Three. They overall. They, well, I, I saw I saw one of our insiders, mm-hmm. Chris, be, Chris just joking, say that the Broncos really won. <laughs> yeah, and that's I believe not, it. That's not, that's not what I yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> say, say, but say, say what, I <laughs> <laughs> say exactly what I said. The new more report. So uh, what did you say, Chris? I said Sean Payton creaming in his panties for JJ McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they got rid of Russ today. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. I to pause the question for a second. These sap suckers got eighty-five million dollars in dead money. Why? That's to get rid of Russ. Just, just don't let people tell you that that shit even matters. Like this, if this, it, if the if they kept really really mad and it wasn't something they could work around, there's no way they're taking an eighty five million dollar hit. <laughs> right, more, Dead more money. reason that the cap is cap. Exactly, we've been saying it for years. Russ was a part of the greatest firing of all time. I listen, <laughs> you fire me and you paying me my salary still. All right, cool. Like you yeah. you got to pay me home. regardless. Look okay. Right, at me Here's like, the you sure? Look, man, I could have left yesterday, man. It's, I don't want right. to cause no problems. I got my own flight. Don't even worry about it. I'm right. all, this stuff, find... all this stuff, keep it. Yeah. Let's, let's throw it away. So, I don't need it. But look, here's the big that's mis- the type of mis- fire. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The biggest misconception is put people put it in the chat. That's that Walmart money. That's NFL money. Yes. That's money that's, allotted that's to the teams. Money. That's that's mm-hmm. allotted to the teams. They ain't got nothing to do with the owners. This is money coming from the NFL pot. Oh, so that means all teams. Technically, could have done it even though it's not good business. So, yeah, it's not Walmart money. That's the players' money in particular. The teams mm-hmm. just are just able to manipulate it. That salary cap comes from the players' cut. So, you know, they, they talk about oh, they can't afford it. it, ain't, it ain't, ain't that money to afford it? It's the players. Mm-hmm. And just to remind people, because it, 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 I'm gonna be honest, it, it's because it makes me feel a little bit better, but. uh they traded two first, two seconds, a fifth, and three players <laughs> for Russell Wilson right. two years ago. It makes you right. feel better. Well, he, was already, he was already on the downswing. Yeah, mm. man, that look. That's the type of firing that would. I, I you would never see me play again. I, 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 I mean, I got eighty-five million coming to me. I could just sit at home, chill with Sierra. Mm. Now nah, I'm good. Right. Okay. And then they he traded got, first and a second for Sean Payton. I don't Ooh. know how athletes. Mm. Salute to every athlete. Mm. That, that keeps still motiv- that is still motivated to play after they get a big contract. Let, let me get five million dollars in my bank account. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as, 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 I don't know who I, I don't know if I was talking to. I can remember who I was talking to, but it, you you need that f you money. Yeah, you need enough money that to, to, to say f you. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's when they hit that when they hit that account. You need you need enough to say f you. Mm-hmm. Hey Jose. Hey, so Carson the Palmer told the Bengals. Training camp. I'll do training camp. <laughs> hey, Jose. I, I like you. I'm signing with my next team for a dollar. <laughs> because whatever, hey, whatever he signs, whatever, whatever he signs, whatever he signs for this year, that money comes out of the 39 million that, that Denver owes him. Oh, oh so I'm signing man. to my new team for a dollar. You know who you know who did something like that, Hendo? And you ain't gonna like it. Who's that? Taggart. He took a well, low-ball yeah. contract with FAU, so Florida State would need to pay him. It depends on how the contract's written. Because Matt Rule tried to do that too. Uh, he tried to he he got lower salaries in his first several years in Nebraska, Nebraska. you know, like an escalating salary because mm-hmm. Carolina was still paying him. Carolina mm-hmm. sued his ass. <laughs> 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 okay, let's 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 get back on track. We done went way left. Uh, uh, left. I think um, me. That's Chris, how that's how we went Mike. eight hours last week. Right. <laughs> um, so look, I I watched even less time as my man Hendo did. Um <laughs> but 
I know you've seen some is, snippets or something though. Oh yeah, of course. So like what I do is, you know, I I keen in on like snippets of, you know, some local cats, the Merlin guys, right? The mm-hmm. Terps, you know. So those are my guys that's gonna make some money. Okay. I got two to three guys, right? That's gonna make some money from uh University of Maryland. And that's just because look, if they get drafted, they made money. All right, so they, you know, we don't, outside of the big names, the digs and stuff like that, you know, we don't have too many big name draft picks out of there. But one being got, I think his name is Gottlieb Aye Aye Deze. What do you play? Something like Ooh. that. That's Olam is six. <laughs> Gottlieb is his first name. <laughs> Gottlieb yeah. is his first name. Yeah. Um, right. Listen, in this that's kid, a creative player. I think six, six, four, six, four, three hundred, <laughs> six, four, three, three oh five or so. Um, ran a five, 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 one. Uh, I think it was a five flat, basically a five flat 40, I think. Um, and this kid was a division three player. He started at Frostburg mm-hmm. and transferred to Maryland. So he go, he, I think he just made himself a little bit of money. Uh, my second player is Bo Braid. Okay, Bo Braid is actually a local local kid from the same uh, county where Jose and I reside and attended high school. Where he uh, go? He went to River Hill. Man, River Hill put out they put out some players, man. Yeah, so he 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 plays safety. I'm not sure what his numbers were, but uh, you know all the all the write ups about him. Uh, appear to look that he will go somewhere between the fifth round, fifth, five and seven, which would be good, man, for a local kid like that. So uh, we are part of a small county. It's about, what, 13 high schools? So anytime you get uh, somebody out of this area, um, you know, that's that's a big, that's a big, uh, that's a big thing for this area. So I think these guys made themselves some money this weekend. And then honorable mention, Tarheeb still. Um, I remember that name. Yeah, corner. Forty time was a little iffy. I think it was four or five ish. Um, but I think uh, big kid, big body corner. Uh, basically a four year starter at Maryland. So <clears throat> I think he'll make somebody's team. And a, a little fun fact: uh, Michael Campanero. Uh, oh uh, gosh, a yes. fan favorite went around the these parts. Also, also went to River Hill. Yep. And Kevin Johnson. I don't know if y'all remember Kevin Johnson who got drafted by the Texans um yeah, in the first round, I think. Mm, he out of Wake Forest. He he went he went to the same school. Kevin Arrow from Wake too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh shit, Kevin Johnson. I forgot about him. Yeah. Chris? I liked him. I liked him too. Um yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go defense. I'm gonna say um Quinyan Mitchell made himself a lot of money this mm. week. Toledo, uh, right? Yeah, from Toledo. Um, I think he has a chance to be the first cornerback taken. Um, you know, obviously, you know, coming out of Toledo, it's always going to be are you athletic and the the competition you face. Um, mm-hmm. He went to the Senior Bowl, shut it down on the Senior Bowl. Mm-hmm. He went to the Combine and put up damn near elite numbers in every category. So, and then also, you know, the production is not just he's shutting down one side of the field. He can also take the ball away. Mm-hmm. and be a playmaker so um i think he he might have you know tested and played himself into the top 15 and, and possibly the first cornerback taken and then um the second guy is uh byron murphy the second mm-hmm. um out of texas defensive uh, tackle defensive tackle um he's a guy you know six six feet and a half uh, almost 300 pounds ran a four eight seven at that size mm-hmm. and you know, he not only did that, 33 on the vert, 28 reps on the bench press, you know, and it's not just Jim strong. You know, the dude is on the field football strong, too. Uh, in my opinion, he's the best interior defensive lineman. And I think with his testing, I think he solidified that this uh, this week because it was between him and um, Jerzon Newton. And it, you just, to in my opinion, you look on the field, you look at the testing, and I think Byron Murphy just blew it out the water. All right. For me, I had a couple ways I can go. Um, but for I'm a, the two guys I'm gonna go with, one is the guy that me and Chris have been really high on. And we and we already thought he would be right around pick 30. I think because of the combine and the way he showed out, 
third is a pipe dream now, and that's uh Troy Fontenot. Uh, I, I don't think there's no way in hell he's gonna be there at pick 30 now. The way he moved, the way he ran, the way he showed, like the way he can move in space and whatnot, ain't ain't no no way he's gonna be there at, at pick the, 30. The dude that was running like a tight end from Washington, possibly, yeah. And there's some other tackles like that. That this tackle class is really deep, and he can play either one. He said he said it'd be an honor to block for Lamar Jackson. Yep, he did say that. And the, the second one, I wasn't gonna say this guy, but since Mike went local, I'm gonna go local. Terry on mm. the um cornerback from Alabama. Now okay. I thought, you know, when he when he was in high school here, I didn't he went to a private school, he went to JP2, and you know, I knew he was good, but I didn't think he was when he signed with Alabama. I'm like, is this kid really this good? Like, because he went to the private school, and I'm like. You know, I ain't knocking, but I just didn't realize he was that good. Then his first couple of years there, he didn't, you know, he played a little bit, but didn't do too much. And this year, he was a MFD, last word dog. <laughs> and I was like, man. <laughs> and and he showed out on tape, like his own tape that he can do during that anything. Now, his 40 time wasn't the greatest, but all them drills and ball skills and all that stuff, awesome. Awesome. So I'm gonna go Terry on on them and Troy Fott knew that, you know, and they were they were already first round guys, but I think you know, every slot you go up in the first round, you make more money. So I think they made more money. And it's it's a, a, some other ways I can go, like uh summer, what's his name, Chris? Summer from BYU. Um oh, Kingsley. Kingsley made some money. Uh our boy Talisi made some money. It's 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 a bunch of old linemen that made some money, even the, the guard from UConn made some money. Damn near so, every old lineman made money. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> the old lineman Sunday, them got them cats put on the show yesterday. They put on the show with, with their movement, being able to move. And if you need old lineman and you pick 20 and up, you better get them. You better get them because they there. <laughs> they are there for the take.